For me, the studio has always been this point of disaster where it's been a catch-all for anything art related in our business and our personal practices. And it means that the nook and crannies get full of rocks, printing stuff, garbage, sometimes installations. Perhaps many of you might feel the same way about your own studio spaces. There is like a paralyzing, crippling sensation that prevents all work. And I've found it and it is the clutter in my space. I'm excited to share with you all the improvements I've done on the studio and I did them all on zero dollars. I repurposed, reused, recycled, I upcycled, I thrift crafted things to become better in my space. Let's go check it out. What are the secrets of studio practice? I wanna know all your good and bad habits. How do you make art like a pro? There's so many ways to do so. Kyle, welcome to my print shop. Maybe you've never been here before, maybe you have. We're gonna go on a studio tour and I'm gonna show you all the cool and interesting things that Chrissy and I have here in our print studio. This is a 22 foot long paper table. This is the cleanest space in the entire studio. In a space that is inherently dirty, inky, and messy, this is the one spot I can confidently put down a sheet of white paper and know it's not gonna get ink on it and get wrecked. It's incredibly easy to build one of these. It's just a sheet of plywood cut 36 inches deep with a structure of two by twos underneath and some gas piping for legs situated at 36 inches high. It is a fantastic space to work on. Our next stop is gonna be our book press. Uh, this is used in book binding and it can be used in adjacent printmaking processes for sandwiching papers down, for drawing prints and for making things just flat. You can also see a squish of pineapple in this if you go and watch this video. Here, centrally located in the studio, is a set of drawers that we made out of salvaging old office desks. Destined for the dump, we ripped out their cabinetry innards, we stole the sliders, and we rebuilt them into a cabinet to become the holding place for all of our regular tools out here in the shop. I couldn't afford all of the plastic little containers that go into drawer inserts and really they didn't math into this drawer at all. So I built it out of cardboard and hot glue instead. I'm really pleased with the results. I am so done with looking at junk stored underneath tables. The junk's gotta go. It's time for all that clutter to leave my studio. Here what we are looking at is actually nothing. It's actually the absence of something. We used to have giant stones stored here and other things that weighed many hundreds of pounds. And now they no longer exist underneath these tables, which means I can actually tuck in my chair. Behind me is a large stack of flat files, an integral part to every print studio. Here is where we store all of our paper, our plates, in-progress works, stencils, and everything else that needs to be stored flat. As a coveted resale item, these can be quite hard to come by. We found ours on Kijiji. It took us about, oh, I would say a year and a half until we found one that was at a reasonable price point. A not so essential item is the sound system of my studio. I really enjoy having music out here and for myself and my creative process, it is kind of an integral thing to keep me motivated and keep that adrenaline going through the 10th to 12th hour of any project out here. While we're down here at this end of the studio, we're gonna pop into the Vandercook room and I'm gonna show you our letterpress studio. This here is my Vandercook SP15. I think this is my favorite press in the entire studio. I have a connection to it that I, I just love it in a way that I do not love my other presses. <laughs> What I was hoping to do in this space is to separate the kind of printmaking processes. I felt like the letterpress studio is a space that I want to expand in the future. And I feel like it needs to have a bit more dedicated space in order for me to envision how it's going to grow. What I like about this space is kind of the feeling of the scrappiness that exists in here. So not only my kind of thrift crafted angled bench, but also this one, this was the past owner's invention where they had used all of this metal angle iron to create the framework to house all of the cabinet drawers. 
This is a small etching press here in our studio. I don't know what the manufacturer is. I can't find any label that indicates who made this. It was donated to us by the late Otto Rogers. And this press is really great for doing smaller intaglio work. This is the main alley of printmaking here in the studio. To the side, we have a whole bunch of glass tables and all of our inks, all the tools that you need to actually do printmaking. While right here, immediately accessible is our printmaking presses. A few of my favorite parts here are the improvements that we've made to the storage and to just the overall organization of how the space functions. And I'm talking like the proximity between like the glass and the table surfaces, how far you have to like turn to do stuff or access stuff. It seems like a really small thing, but when you're doing the same repetitive motion hundreds and hundreds of times, an extra step here, an extra reach there, all those things begin to add up. To the left and right hand side, we have repurposed an old craft booth and that craft booth has now become roller storage. What that means for me is that the rollers can be easily put away. They are protected from light, they're protected from dust, and they're just kept in a really organized fashion. I tried to really consider that all of my etching stuff would be located on that half, while on this half, all of my lithography and relief printing stuff would be located. This is my Sturges etching press. This was made in the mid 1900s, and this press is predominantly used for doing plate work. What I print on here is copper etchings and some relief prints, like lino cuts and some thin wood cuts. Here is my litho press. This guy is a Parks press built in 1854, and this is for doing stone lithography and some relief printing work. I added a shelf underneath to help kind of just hold the different things that are related to this press. I have some of my leather rollers that we use for lithography roll-up being stored here. They're out of the way and they are covered so that they don't get any sort of dust on them. On the other side of the shelf is all of the carborundum grit that is required when you are grinding down a stone. And then way underneath, I used some old scrap wood to put some old scrap casters on it to store some of the heaviest lithostones in my studio. If you're curious about what this press all does and what I mean by stone lithography, you can watch my OAC litho research project. So below in this bottom cabinet are tools and chemistry related to lithography and all the stuff that you would typically use with this press here while everything underneath in this cabinet you would typically use with this press or the other smaller etching press. And down in the middle here is some loose papers, some other printmaking papers, and kind of just general clean goods. It's also where I used to store my newsprint. However, I've recently made a new storage space for my newsprint. It now lives here, in this table. This is a mobile inking station. Previously, this used to be a really big table that kind of sat in the middle of the room over here. It was an object that was so big that it intruded on the space and I had to make the decision to dismantle it. A third of it became this. And I'm really, really happy with what this is because I think this is ultimately more useful than what that table was. And I built it small enough that it can move in between all the different alleyways within the studio so I can take this and work with this anywhere I want if I need to expand the inking surface at whatever press I'm working on, or if I need to cart it around the corner and take it into the Vandercook room. With this cabinet, one of the prominent design decisions I wanted to make was that the glass surface be removable and that the glass surface not be at level with the, like, whatever railing was going to hold it in. So I created a notch in the outside edge of the wood so that I could slide a pallet knife in in order to lift off the glass. Not only is this our screen print area, but it also doubles as additional workspace when Chrissy and I are working at the lithography press or at the etching press. And this is our screen printing table. This has a series of hinges attached to the surface of the cabinet where we can lock in our screens and do silk screen. This cabinet was repurposed, and so it's not the most ideal thing for screen printing. However, I have been doing some modifications to it to adapt it to screen printing. 
One of those big modifications I did was putting in a vertical support bar inside the cabinet to help with the flexing of the table surface while we were printing. One of my future aspirations with this table or with a new table is to try to make a DIY vacuum table. If you're curious to what a vacuum table is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a table that is now a vacuum. And so when you put paper on it, it pulls and sucks that paper and holds it into position. It's a really great tool to have in screen printing, although the prefabricated ones are very expensive and unfortunately outside of my budget. Our second screen printing station, this guy over here, is the second third of the central table that I was talking about earlier. So it got broken down into that rolling cabinet and then a part became this. So we didn't quite lose the surface area of the table, we just reconfigured it. One of the bits of metal that came off of one of the old office desks has now become a frontal support bar, which is what this white thing here is that you can see, to help deal with the same problem that my previous table had, which is the flexing across the middle of the table itself. One of the first and original pieces of glass in our studio was this one. Back in 2009, this piece of glass was actually attached to a whole steel table underneath. Now, as the studio has grown, I got rid of that because I don't really feel like we needed to have this giant bulky metal thing. But I didn't really feel like I wanted to throw out the glass, so I repurposed it and I built a bit more of a wooden support on the edges and attached adjustable feet. So this mobile piece of glass sits on top of a mobile drying rack. When we first opened the studio, we looked at prefabricated drawing racks and came to a couple conclusions. One, they're really big. Two, they're really expensive. Three, they don't fit and work within our space. So I had to really start thinking about not only counter surface, but utilizing the surface underneath. So we built a drawing rack that can actually tuck underneath all of the cabinetry here in the studio. We get a lot of inquiries about DIYing a drying rack, and if you're curious to know more about it, you can find a link to some additional information below. Moving etching presses and lithography presses is really difficult. They're incredibly heavy, and you want to move them the least amount of times possible, period. And so I take the time to use Photoshop to essentially blueprint out the whole studio down to the inch. Using Photoshop like this, I can really work through a lot of configurations and I've done quite a lot of them. Some of the designs are successful, some aren't. But what it has allowed me to do is to try multiple configurations very quickly. When I'm making these decisions of where things are going to go, there are a couple things that I try to keep in mind and it is about the proximity of spaces. Here in this alleyway, this is about a 30 inch space between here and here while in the previous alleyway it's about a 36 inch space. Over in this part of the studio is where I have my offset press. This is something that I do not use on a regular basis and so I created a wooden cap that sits on top of the press to help expand some of that workspace. While this press has not yet seen a lot of action in our studio, mainly because it's relatively new, this is an offset press. You work with a plate and ink on the left hand side and when the carriage comes across it transfers that ink onto the right hand side where your paper would be located. When planning the space, the one thing that I didn't really quite love how it ended up was the location of the light table. It's in this back corner, it's not in the most ideal space, but given the rest of the space I really don't know where it's going to fit. Okay, so here's the dirty secret of the studio. What actually ends up happening is junk just gets displaced and this is my new spot for all that junk. Up above my dark room, I've just tried to stash absolutely everything that doesn't have a home. There is some sort of logic here at play, I swear. Although one of the more integral parts of a studio practice, this is not necessarily always the most aesthetically appealing space. This is my dark room. In the dark room is where we do all of our photosensitive plate making and processing, where we do our etching of plates in a ferrochloride bath, where we blow out and reclaim screens. Things don't have to be aesthetically pretty to be really functional. And this is an example of one of these. This was a really easy solution for a spray out booth when we first opened Sparkbox Studio. It was just the cheapest stand up shower that we could buy, then cut in half and raised up to here. We are here standing in front of our merchandise display wall. 
This is the third part of that central table that got de deconstructed and rebuilt. So what we're hoping to do with this space is across the center part here is to display flat prints in a bit of like kind of a record flip through format. While the counter to the left and the counter to the right, those can display other types of merchandise things such as like cloth goods, small prints. And what we're hoping is above here is to have frame featured artwork that we can sell as well. I just wanted to give you like a, a more pulled back version of the space and kind of how big it is in relationship to me and how I kind of envision being able to walk and maneuver around in the space. I, can't, I cannot do a cartwheel. <laughs> It's in such a state now that I'm absolutely in love with it. In fact, I just sometimes go out there and I revel in the cleanliness of it. For 10 or 15 minutes at a time, blankly staring with a smile on my face. I absolutely love where my studio is. It's removed that paralyzing, crippling anxiety that a cluttered space brought to me. And I feel like I can actually move on with my world.